MessageQ is an enterprise strength messaging system that allows applications to exchange data and other information. MessageQ implements the Java Message Service API, an industry standard for reliable asynchronous messaging. Critical to the use of MessageQ in a production system is its ability to scale to meet increasing loads and to continue operating even when failure occurs. This presentation will demonstrate the clustering technologies used by MessageQ to provide a scalable, high availability messaging service. In this presentation, we'll see how MessageQ high availability clusters work and how to configure them. And we'll see a demonstration of high availability in action. Let's start with MessageQ's clustering technology. The heart of a message queue system is the message queue broker. The broker provides for the routing and delivery of messages sent by message producer applications to one or more message consumer applications. Here's how it works. A message producer application connects up to the broker through a connection service provided by the broker. The producer sends a message to a destination on the broker and the broker holds the message in memory pending its delivery to an intended consumer. The broker also stores the message in its persistent data store. When a message consumer application becomes available by connecting to the broker, the broker delivers a message to that consumer. Once the broker verifies that the message has been successfully consumed, the broker deletes the copy of the message it is holding. Typically, a message service supports the exchange of messages between many applications. Depending on your needs, a broker might support hundreds or thousands of producers and or consumers. When a message service is functioning normally, the broker is routing and delivering messages from many producers to many consumers. Some messages are delivered to only one consumer, others might be broadcast to many consumers depending on the needs of the applications that are using the message queue service. Because consumers might be slower than producers, messages can build up in the broker before being delivered and consumed. If the broker should fail, then all message production and delivery comes to an abrupt halt. However, undelivered and unconsumed messages, as well as data regarding the state of message delivery, has been stored in the broker's persistent data store. When a broker restarts, it retrieves the messages and the state information from the data store. Consumers and producers reconnect to the broker and messaging operations resume. These are the basic mechanisms by which MessageQ guarantees that a produced message is consumed by its intended consumers once and only once. The resources of a broker are limited, so as you increase the message load on the broker or connect additional producers and consumers, you will eventually reach a point at which performance will suffer. When this happens, however, you can add additional brokers to create what is called a broker cluster. By creating a cluster, you can redistribute producers and consumers among the brokers in the cluster as well as add additional producers and consumers. In this way, the message service can scale to meet increasing demand. In a broker cluster, the brokers collectively deliver messages to their intended consumers. Messages produced to one broker can be delivered to consumers connected to any of the brokers in the cluster. Each broker is responsible for the delivery of messages produced by the producers connected to it. Brokers communicate and share information about consumers and message delivery state so as to maximize the efficiency of delivery across the cluster. Now, what happens if one of the brokers in the cluster fails? All message production and delivery for that broker stops. However, the remaining brokers in the cluster continue to function normally. In addition, the producers and consumers that had been connected to the failed broker will reconnect to a different broker in the cluster and continue to produce and consume messages. In this way, 
A broker cluster provides for continuous message service availability, even in the face of broker failure. When a failed broker restarts, it reconnects to the cluster and it retrieves the undelivered and unconsumed messages from its persistent data store. The broker resumes message delivery, delivering messages even to consumers that have reconnected to other brokers in the cluster. No messages are lost or fail to be delivered. As consumers and producers are subsequently shut down and restarted, they will reconnect to the original broker, rebalancing the system. As we've seen, a message queue cluster provides high service availability in the face of broker failure. Nevertheless, it could take some time for a failed broker to recover. As a result, delivery of its messages could be delayed significantly. For situations in which such a delay is problematic, you can use replicated data stores and active standby brokers to provide for quicker data availability and recovery. However, Message Queue provides an easier solution to this problem, the Enhanced Broker Cluster. In the Enhanced Broker Cluster, the failure of a broker is automatically detected and recovery takes place with almost no delay in message delivery. In the Enhanced Cluster, the individual broker data stores of brokers in a conventional cluster are merged into a single highly available data store that is shared by all brokers in the Enhanced Cluster. Here's how an enhanced cluster works. The message delivery mechanism of the enhanced cluster is the same as for the conventional broker cluster. However, when a broker in the enhanced cluster fails, the cluster detects the failure and selects another broker within the cluster to take over the work of the failed broker. The takeover broker retrieves the failed broker's messages and state information from the shared data store. Meanwhile, the failed broker's consumers and producers reconnect to the takeover broker. In this way, the takeover broker resumes the work of the failed broker with almost no delay in the delivery of messages. When the failed broker subsequently restarts, it reconnects to the cluster. And as consumers and producers are subsequently shut down and restarted, they will reconnect to their original broker rebalancing the system. We've seen how MessageQ's enhanced cluster technology provides near instantaneous recovery from a broker failure. Now let's see how you configure such a cluster and then view it in action. First, the configuration. Each broker within a cluster is configured with property values unique to that broker as well as properties common to the cluster. For example, let me open the property file for one of the brokers. In this file, you set the broker's host name, port, and a broker ID, which uniquely identifies the broker within the cluster. Each broker within a cluster also has property values that identify it as a member of the cluster. These properties, which are common to all brokers in the cluster, are specified in a separate cluster configuration file. This property shows the URL of this file. Now, I'll open the cluster configuration file, which specifies the broker properties common to all brokers in the cluster. For the enhanced broker cluster, these properties fall into three categories. The first are properties that identify the cluster as an enhanced cluster rather than as a conventional cluster. Setting this property equal to true means that this is an enhanced cluster. And this property, the cluster ID, identifies the name of the cluster for the shared database. The next category specifies a highly available database used as the shared data store. This property is set at JDBC, which specifies that a JDBC-based data store is required. This property, the DB vendor, shows which database is being used, in this case, a MySQL database. And the remaining properties are used to connect the broker 
to that database. The last category specifies a cluster's automatic failure detection. These first two properties, the heartbeat properties, specify the heartbeat service used to detect a possible broker failure. And these last two properties, the monitor properties, specify how the monitoring service decides if a suspected failure has actually taken place. As we can see, configuration of an enhanced broker cluster is pretty straightforward. Now I'll start up an enhanced cluster and demonstrate how it automatically detects and recovers from a broker failure. To begin with, I have started a cluster consisting of three brokers. I have also started a cluster monitor that shows these brokers, broker 1 at port 7676, broker 2 at port 7777, and broker 3 at port 7878. All are shown in an operating state. In addition, I have started up a producer application and connected it to broker 1 at port 7676. I have also started a consumer application and connected it to broker 2 at port 7777. These applications, both the consumer and the producer, are instances of a sample application that is shipped with the message queue product. Now let me go to the producer application and begin sending messages to a destination on broker 1. The producer application has been set to send a message every second until 300 messages have been sent. Notice that messages are now being produced and these messages are accumulating on broker 1, waiting to be delivered and consumed by a consumer. Now I'll go to the consumer application and begin receiving messages from the destination on broker 1 to which the producer has sent them. We can see that messages are now being consumed from broker 1 by this consumer even though the consumer is connected to broker 2, demonstrating the delivery of messages across the cluster. Notice that messages are now accumulating on broker 1 at a slower rate than previously. This is because messages are being consumed as well as being produced. Because our consumer application is consuming messages more slowly than they're produced, messages continue to accumulate on broker 1, but at a slower rate. Now I'm going to kill broker 1 and let's see what happens. Before I do, notice that there are about 55 messages on Broker 1 waiting to be delivered and consumed. I've killed Broker 1. When I killed Broker 1, the cluster soon detected that the broker had failed. As a result, the state of Broker 1 changed to Broker Down, shown in red, and almost immediately changed again to take over complete, shown in yellow. Broker 2 is shown as the takeover broker. The messages previously being held in Broker 1 have now been taken over for delivery by Broker 2. Notice also that in the meantime, the producer had paused, having lost its connection to Broker 1. But as soon as Broker 2 took over, the producer automatically reconnected to Broker 2 and resumed its production of messages. In short, the cluster has automatically restored the state of message production and delivery that existed before Broker 1 had failed. This sequence has shown how the cluster automatically detects and responds to a broker failure. While this demonstration is based on a very simple scenario, the mechanisms apply equally well to a cluster handling many thousands of applications and many thousands of messages per second. As we have seen, MessageQ can support a variety of deployment types, 
from very simple single broker installations to high performance and scalable clusters, and finally, to enhanced clusters with built-in failure detection and recovery. This range of support allows you to tailor your installation to meet your application requirements in a flexible and cost-effective fashion. This ends our presentation on Message Queue High Availability Clusters. For more information on Message Queue and broker clusters, you can check out the Open Message Queue website at the URL shown. You can also consult the Message Queue Technical Overview and the Message Queue Administration Guide for further details. Best of luck and thank you for your attention.